Syl of the Drakes, uh, an awesome looking champion to begin with. And her kit, her utility is all over the place. Look at her thighs, by the way. I just realized this, her thighs, they have like lava texture almost looking like. Because of Syl's kit, she has general utility all around raid and you can use her pretty much until I'd say like late game because late game is around the time that I pretty much stopped using her and she's been in my in my vault ever since. At a certain point, you're going to have a lot of other champions that can do what she does, but I'm going to go ahead and break down the kit, uh, the different builds that I've had for her because she is still a great champion. I mean, even for me now, I could still use her in places like Centrano's, but I remember early on, um, she carried me through a lot of content. I don't remember, and one of you guys can actually let me know, was she one of those like monthly login champions or was she like a seven day login champion? I can't remember. So let's go ahead and talk first about the different kinds of builds that I've had Syl in. I've had Syl in Regent and Immortal. I've had her in Relentless. We've had Stun Set Syl. Stun Set Syl is also pretty nice. What other kind of sets have you guys used Syl in before? The Syl that I've used the most across multiple accounts has to be Relentless Syl. So what I'm gonna do here is build Syl in Relentless, and I'm gonna show you guys the masteries and everything. But first, let's go over the skills. Her A1 has a 20% chance to place decreased speed and also decreased turn meter. This obviously is a nice skill to have, especially if you're gonna be trying to tackle something like the Iron Twins or, you know, whatever boss is going too fast. Having, you know, so it's a 40% chance when you book it up. It's a 40% chance to place decreased speed. It's not entirely reliable, but still it's nice to have on an A1. Also, we're gonna be pushing back turn meter, so that's nice. Her A2 is an AoE, it hits twice with each hit giving a 35% chance to place a stun. Stun, especially early on, is going to be extremely useful when you're trying to do campaign and those waves that have certain champions that hit really hard and you're not at that point yet where you can just smack right through them. Stunning them, meaning having that control on them, that crowd control on them, makes it so that you have a little bit more time to do more damage, maybe heal up and try to take down your enemies. Uh, her A3 revives and then puts ally protect, heals allies by 10% of their max HP the start of each turn, and then places increased speed on a random ally for two turns. The increased speed is kind of whatever, um, you know, not, not whatever, but you don't really rely on it too much. But what we do rely on here is the heals, 10% of their max HP every time she takes a turn. She's going to be providing a lot of healing to your entire squad. Let's go ahead and dive into her masteries real quick. Now, you can use Syl pretty much anywhere. Early on, you're probably going to want to put her in your clan boss team. So go ahead and take the T6 War Master because her A1 is a one hitter. We're going to be taking extra crit rate, extra crit damage. Don't be afraid to build I can't say that word. Don't be afraid to build Syl with some damage. You can actually, or she can actually do some uh, some pretty good work out there. We're going to be taking extra damage when we're having full health. Uh, Life Drinker in case her HP drops down below 50%. Increase damage to targets with less than 40% HP. Bring it down for some extra damage against those who have higher max HP. Pretty much going to be most of the time, especially if you're going against the clan bosses or the user in Hydra. Methodical will increase the damage that she places with her A1 every time uh, she uses it in one battle up to 10%. And then of course, T6 Mastery, War Master to proc that extra damage. So here you can go either either way, really. If you wanted to, you could even take the defense tree. But I think early on, and the reason why I'm going to mention early on quite a bit is because I think that if you're late game or end game, you're probably not using Syl that much. And you're probably going to be going down the defense tree, improve parry, rejuvenation for the extra healing, resurgent. Uh, damage mitigation here and then counterattack probably or even cycle of magic there's different routes you can you could take on the support tree you could go down this route that i've taken or you can take extra accuracy right here and you might even want to consider taking lore of steel for some extra stat bonuses there's nothing wrong with taking evil eye to help decrease that turn meter even further the sniper will not affect stun if you really wanted to increase the chance to place a stun you could take fearsome presence that would be more so geared towards a supportive build if you just need it for support but if you're looking for somebody to do damage and i think if you're early game you're gonna want to bring her in with a war master for going up against the clan boss last thing gifts that increase speed 
And then Spirit Haste to increase speed by 8 for every dead ally. If you need extra accuracy, you could take extra accuracy here on Eagle Eye for the T6 Mastery. But yeah, so extra healing here, extra healing for the team here, and then Cycle of Magic so that we have a chance to use the A3 or the A2 again. I think I'm not really going to use Sil that much anymore, and we're going to be okay with this kind of accuracy. Let's go ahead and put this on her. All right, so here is Sil fully built. These are the pieces of gear that we have on her. We're prioritizing speed and HP. Relentless set, we're going to get an 18% chance to take extra turns. Of course, we want to be taking as many turns as possible for that passive proc, as well as her utility just for placing decrease uh, speed, all that other good stuff. Extra defense, we've got the triple on the defense here. Speed, defense, more speed, accuracy, HP. HP percent on the gloves with some speed if you can get them. HP percent on the chest with some speed. It would be ideal to get some HP percent and defense percent on here too, but this is just the only uh, relentless chest that I had. Defense percent on the boots with speed. If you're early game, you're probably not going to have the ability to use defense or HP percent boots quite yet, but just know that later on, you're probably going to want to try and get that done. Ideally, you would use defense percent or HP percent boots with speed rolls on them. Now, I'm not saying that's the case for every champion that you're going to have later on in the end game, because for an example, somebody like Siffy or Arbiter, you're always going to want to have them in speed boots. But sometimes you get a decent champion who you might want to just um, put defense percent boots or attack percent boots, mainly nukers. So like, for an example, my, my Rotos has attack percent boots or Harima is in defense percent boots with speed rolls on them. So just keep that in mind. We got defense on the ring, defense on the amulet, accuracy on the banner. Try to get some speed and HP percent on those two. Uh, well, not uh, the ring and the amulet, but yeah. Total stats, we're looking at 76k HP, almost uh, 4,300 defense, and just about 200 speed. Got a little bit on resistance, a little more on accuracy. Let's go ahead and try her out. Actually, let's go ahead and do some glyphing. It bothers me that it's not even... Oh, I don't, I don't want to use a speed glyph on this because I know I'm going to get rid of this. Let's use a speed glyph on this right here. Just the one? Just the one? Just the two. Why not, Calarium? Why not? I swear the, the enchantments need a mercy system. 201 speed. There you go. I had some stuff that I wanted to show you guys initially, but to be honest, it was kind of shit recordings. Like, it, it wouldn't be nice and it would be a waste of your guys' time if I even put a bunch of mediocre showcases. I, I'm in the endgame. My gear is endgame. So it's not even fair to make that comparison or show you guys, oh, look what she can do. Like, yeah, she can do these things, but it, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't sit right with me. And then I tried taking her into Arena. The issue that I had taking her into Arena is that either the people that I was going up against were really just bad at Arena, or when I did go up against somebody who was legit, somebody of my caliber, quote unquote, they pretty much just smashed right through Sill. Like, Sill is honestly kind of outdated if you're going to bring her all the way up to something like Gold 5 Arena. In Hydra, she can do wonders for you in terms of keeping your team alive, a little bit of damage here and there. But again, especially if you've been doing a lot of the fusions as of late, like if you're if you're new to raid and you've been doing the fusions, you know, every, everybody that they're coming out with will be able to provide a lot more than what Sil can provide you. I'm not saying she's bad. She's still a strong champion. God, I don't want to say she's outdated, but like, I, I feel like she might be outdated. <laughs>